Hey, welcome. Uh, here's another special episode of Cinephiles, Brunch with the Cinephiles, with our special guest, Mike White, of the podcast, The P Projection Booth. Um, and we've already had a discussion with him about his work, about the Cine King Festival, and now we thought we'd take the opportunity to discuss the Oscars, since they just happened, and whether or not we thought the films that were nominated deserved their nominations, and what were our favorite films of the year. So, Mike, what did you yes. think of the Oscars this year? Gosh. What do you think of the nominations? You don't even fucking introduce me. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, what Eddie. the fuck is this shit? It's uh, like, I'm not even here. I can just see I just go over there. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, no, seriously, what did you think of the nomination? What did I think of the nomination? Okay, I thought you were talking about the ceremony, which I was going to say kind of went on for a little while. We can long. talk about the ceremony, too. Yeah. <laughs> There's uh, a lot to talk about. Nominations, I mean, I'm still getting used to the whole 9, 10 film nomination kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, But, you know, I, I thought there were some good films in there. I don't think there were anywhere just like, oh, my God, this is terrible. This shouldn't be nominated. Right. Um, but, yeah, it was like... Yeah. Any films you thought didn't deserve, like like you thought were good, but really there, Oscar nomination? There were very few films where I was just like completely taken on, taken back by them. Just like, mm -hmm. oh my god, this is a you know an orgiastic you know, cinema experience. You Argo, know. <coughs> Argo. Um, I liked Argo. I might not have seen it in the best way that I possibly could because I saw a Chinese bootleg of it. So every time oh, right. that any oh. of the characters <laughs> spoke. Arabic, it was subtitled in Chinese, but right. it was not subtitled in English. So it was a little a little rough to, to see. So it was kind of good because then I felt more like one of the Canadians or Americans where I didn't understand what they were necessarily saying. So it was kind of good that way. I thought Argo was all right. I didn't think it was bad. I, I thought it was actually a perfectly entertaining film. Yeah. But I didn't think it was one of the best movies. Well, in the it was so much. I mean, I can see why Argo won. Um, it, it's just so much Hollywood just kind of patting itself on the back, just saying, we save lives with our movies. We can do this job. My so. theory is why I won, is, and I, I, think it's, I think it's a pretty decent theory, is that Ben Affleck didn't get nominated for Best Director. People mm -hmm. were like going, oh my God, you're not giving it to Ben Affleck because he's an actor. So he said, Look, you know what, let's show him. Let's give him Best Picture. That's what I think. I don't get the controversy. I mean, there's, there's nine pictures being nominated for mm -hmm. Best Picture. There's five guys being nominated for Best uh, Director. So obviously, four people are going to get. Stiffed. Yeah, I don't see the controversy either. Yeah. And I, you know, everyone pretty much assumed Argo was going to get an Oscar nomination from the get go. It wasn't. It was like a no brainer. Yeah, the mm -hmm. best directed picture isn't that usually the one that wins the Oscar? Yeah, but you know, it. it is that what makes a movie? Yes, but if you've only got five nominations, like like Mike said, if you only got five nominations for best director, but you got ten nominations, actually, it was just nine nominations nine, for best yeah, film, which was weird. Issue, which is weird, right? And it's also weird that somebody's going to be left out in two categories. Amora is best picture and best foreign picture, right? Which Does I thought that was really interesting. Normally, I don't or? know. I I don't know if that a precedent has been yeah. set yet with that, which I thought was interesting. I have not seen Amora. Here it's outstanding. Uh, yeah, my friend, uh, you know, was Tony. Mm -hmm was really actually very angry that uh, Jennifer Lawrence won Best Actress. He said that the woman from uh, Riva, from uh, Amore, whatever. Have won. I hear she's very good. I haven't seen it yet myself. So I hear I she's very good. Although I got to say to little girl, I'm not going to say her name because I don't know how to pronounce it, yeah. so help me God. Just don't call that cunt. From Beast of the... Yeah, yeah, she's not Beast, a cunt. From Beast of the... Yeah. Yeah. Don't call it like the onion did. They called her a cunt. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's really call attention <laughs> to that tasteless <laughs> joke and give it more importance yes, than it deserves. exactly. Uh, I was going to say that I thought she was... I, usually I'm not big on child actors mm -hmm. being nominated, but she was outstanding. She was great, but the guy who acted with her, the guy who played her yes. father, I think he helped her so much and gave her the material to work off of, and I thought he was And he was, was not amazing. a professional actor either. Oh, he I'm was great. Bagel, Don't stuff he your face He was great. Uh, she, she, I haven't had anything to eat yet. I've been setting up the cameras. So half of that bagel's already been eaten, dude. Uh, but, but anyways... <laughs> <laughs> by you uh, no but I was going to say that uh, that what were we talking about Beast of the Southern Wild yes yeah. that guy was a non-professional actor he was like a he was great. baker wow. he like runs a bakery that's amazing yeah he was terrific in that too I wonder if he bakes as good as he acts now that they've opened it up to 910 films there are there is a bigger field which is great that smaller films can get in there right. and I think it did deserve it I think there were other indie films that deserved it just as much uh, I thought Compliance could have been in that. Which is outstanding. Yeah. But I could understand why. Right. That might be divisive among some people. But the compliance is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's really, really good. But, you know, kind of that same smaller film kind of thing. But I think they're really only going to make room for one or two smaller films. And they're going to do, you know, the last few years we get 
the master filmmakers, uh, and I feel weird saying that, you know, but you know, the, your Scorsese's, your Spielberg's, you know, kind of the old, what is the old guard now? Right. And then you're going to get your upstarts, your David O. Russells, your Aronofsky's, those kind of folks. A lot of the films I didn't see till after, mm -hmm. after uh, you know the year began. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised with Silver yeah. Line. I was expecting, you know, I'm a David O. Russell fan. But mm -hmm. I was expecting, oh, this is his bid to do something commercial, blah 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 blah. I've but liked David O. Russell since Spanking the Monkey. I mean, I haven't seen everything that he's done, but I really have enjoyed his work. Uh, I really liked Flirting with Disaster. Lincoln, did you see Lincoln? Saw Lincoln. Yep. Uh, you know, know how it ends. So, <laughs> you know, it, it was like that for a lot of films. You know? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I actually, I, I was surprised at how much I like Lincoln. Too, I'm surprised cause... at the end of Lincoln that he didn't come back from the dead and like attack him because that's what usually what happens to Spielberg films. They should end. Well, early. you know, I, I really actually found... I had the same problem with Lincoln. It should there's a point where it should have ended and it kept going. Yeah. I found the historical inaccuracies very disturbing. I mean, because I saw the other Lincoln film, so I know that the whole war was based on vampires. So to see this whole bullshit know, about slavery, I... it's like, okay. What happened to the martial arts? What I know. happened to the wire foo? Les Miserables. Uh, I know there's a lot of fans out there for this film, uh, but I gotta tell you, I thought it was awful. Yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not against musicals. Yeah. In fact, we did a musical show. One of my favorite films of all time is a musical. Which is? Uh, uh, Singing in the Rain. No, oh yeah. Uh, I also love Phantom of Paradise, film. which yeah. is completely opposite. But uh, Phantom of Paradise and Little Shop of Horrors here. I thought, I thought Les Mis was absolutely terrible. Hmm. Absolutely terrible. Okay, because I wanted to see it. But it's well. So I encourage you to see it. Uh, my problem is, it's like they want to do this like really intimate, almost verite thing when mm -hmm. it comes to like getting close on the actors and let them do their singing thing. Right. Which actually is the best part of the film. It mm -hmm. actually works very well. But then when they want to expand it and do like this like great crane shot where they pull away and mm -hmm. they show all the sets and stuff, it's all so heavily CGI mm -hmm. and it, it completely takes you out of the film. Yeah. Yeah, CGI, I mean, I know there's a big controversy right now about, you know, the visual, the effects, visual effects and stuff. And I'm just like, you know, guys, if you made that damn orangutan look at all real, then maybe you could bitch. But right now, just shut the fuck up. You well, know? actually, I, have my, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. I think part of the problem, reason why that orangutan isn't so real is because they're not getting paid. Mm -hmm. True. In Life of Pi, I mean, it was distracting to me because I could see, like, real tiger, fake tiger, real tiger, real tiger, fake tiger, fake tiger. And it, it just took me out of the movie so much. Just, uh, you know, just having that going on through well, my head. Well, speaking of, of controversy, what do you think about that winning Best Cinematography? Yeah, that's kind of weird. I mean, it kind of speaks to I mean, the digital they age have to shoot that we're a live in. Actor on right. a stage, that lighting has to match up with mm -hmm. whatever they composite with. Does that? Is a lot easier. Is that, that is right? that technically cinematography, cinematography or, or not? Or? Right. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Does the lighting match with the, the special debate. effects or not? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. I mean, that whole thing where you know, once they were done with the Lord of the Rings, they took them and completely, you know, recolored and changed so much, which was fascinating to see on those documentaries. But yeah, same kind of idea. Is this cinematography? Because it wasn't an in-camera kind of thing. Where right. does cinematography end? Of all the movies that I saw, I would probably see Silver Linings Playbook again, maybe Argo. Um, really, that's... That's about it. Django. Django Unchained, maybe. You know, and that's, that's the thing is I enjoyed it. It was a good popcorn movie. Great way to spend a Saturday afternoon. But it's not something I'm going to be rushing out to see again anytime soon. I felt the same way as you on that one. <laughs> I, I saw Django. And um, I, 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 I like you was a Tarantino, big Tarantino fan. In fact, my favorite Tarantino film, which I don't give a shit what anyone says, I love it, is Jackie Brown. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first film since Jackie Brown that I really liked of his. However, I had one major problem, and and, and this is before, this is not anyone else saying this to me. I mean, other people after I talked to him had the same problem I did. It should have ended about a half an hour earlier. When Tarantino, I don't think anyone disagrees with that. Well, I mean, I heard other people were saying it, but I felt that even when I saw it, I was like, mm -hmm. this is actually good. And then it just went on. I'm like, I want to get out of here, you know. And it just, it just, it it could have been written better at the end. They could have condensed those two things together. Mm -hmm. That one ending and it would have made it a lot tighter. 
I wow. love I loved all the cameos, by the way. It's nice to see all my actors, and they were used. They were used well. They weren't too mm-hmm. distracting. Like I love seeing Robert Carradine for a second. A lot it's better, nice yeah, a lot better than uh, than the way that he used Mike Myers in Inglorious Bastards. Which yeah, just that was that was um, really took me out of the film. That was weird. I was waiting for like Doctor Evil or like some sort of punch I, yeah. I was just waiting for like, shall we shag just, now or shag later? Right. You know, like, it was, it was oh. just kind of weird. What were your favorite movies of the year? Were the ones that stood out? Well, for you? everyone's in a, already. And you have a unique POV. We all know that. But Yes, yeah. I'm Mr. Exploitation. I admit it. I'm no bones about it. I don't pretend to be Mr. Highbrow Art Snob, okay? I like entertainment. I want to go to a movie and be fucking entertained. I don't want to be there enlightened every single time. I, I don't get wrong. I like being enlightened. That's like why you time. like Michael Bay and Brett Ratner. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, dude. That's an insult. That's like, say, that's like saying I'm a child rapist. Don't do that shit. That's not allowed, dude. One film that was the biggest surprise is one that you saw at the Toronto Film Festival. And it's a an attempt of a relaunch of a previous uh, adapted property, which was Dread, mm-hmm. a.k.a. Judge Dread. Uh, without a doubt, perhaps the best comic book adaptation I have seen. One is, I like that it didn't wasn't afraid of its origins. Mm-hmm. It wasn't afraid to say it was a comic book film. And also, I like that it didn't try to tone itself down. It was very violent, but that's not why I liked it. I liked it because it was taken seriously. And there's some really nice moments. The best use of 3D I have ever seen. Yeah, agreed. That is something that must be seen in 3D. And it upsets me so much because that is a film that is so good, but it was a mega bomb. I think it only made like six, seven million dollars its opening weekend. And then you see some piece of shit like Battle Los Angeles was one of the probably one of the worst films I've ever seen. Made two hundred million dollars. But Dread made a lot of its money back in DVD. Yeah, and, which and, is and, great. And, which is really, really good because it's it got great word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And, and so there may be a sequel now. Yeah. I don't think so. They they figured if you checked on eBay, sadly, or there's articles, they're actually selling all the props on eBay, which is really hmm. sad. I hope oh. to God that they can make a sequel because it's a film. And by the way, the most daring thing in the film oh. that I like the most was Carl Urban never taking off his that mask. That was great. That Which is was the great. best, the character. Yeah. yeah. And then, it was yeah. very, it was, I mean, I grew up a big fan of 2080, which is which is the serialized comic book that Dredd made its introduction in. And it was a black and white comic. Uh, it introduced Alan Moore to the world, all these great writers. Mm-hmm. And and this film, I watch this, this is, this is Judge Dredd. From the comic, this this is this is one of the more faithful in spirit adaptations of a comic I've ever seen. I thought uh, everybody really just gave it their all in this. I mean, Olivia Thirlby, Olivia Headley, no Thirlby, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, who yes, played his partner. Yes, right. yes I thought her. she could have been a throwaway character. Oh yeah, totally. And, and she was really good and yeah. very well written. Yes, yes. And I like the way that they and portrayed the, uh, the the psychic powers and everything. I thought yeah. that was very well. Which is in, which is in the comic. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite moments in that movie, and I think it's one of my favorite moments of last year, is. There's a scene where she has him in the elevator, and she goes, "He's thinking about taking your gun." Yeah. Oh wait, he's changed his mind. Yeah. It's such yeah. a well played, brilliantly written scene. And this is a movie that people will not give credit to the script. The script is great. It's written by Alex Garland, who is uh, Danny Boyle's regular contributor. Not and, anymore. Not anymore, but he was, and right. he supposedly directed some of this film or took it over in the cutting room. Uh, there was a trouble production history. It sure doesn't show on screen. One problem with Dread, and it's not its fault, is bad timing because there was a film that came out that Eric and I actually saw earlier uh, with the director in attendance, which was The Raid. Mm-hmm. Uh, another which, very good another movie. Another very here. good movie. Yeah. But I liked it a lot, but something, I don't know, I, I'm really going towards the, the Dread because I love the utopian version of that future. That, that, not sorry. Not utopian. Utopian. Not dystopian. Dystopian. Yeah. I've heard. <laughs> I like the dystopian version of the future, very dark, and it was a unique vision, which you haven't seen before. I actually was a little fatigued by watching The Raid. I don't know, it's had awesome. I seen it in a theater, if that would have made a difference, but watching it on, on uh, at home I on DVD. The Raid, I, yes, they had a similar story, but, mm-hmm. but, the, but I saw them as two entirely different movies. Mm-hmm. I, one did not remind me of the other at all. Like, like The Raid was a pure balls-to-the-walls martial arts action film. And that's what it was all about. It was about the choreography. Mm-hmm. Whereas Dread is an action film, but they're not martial arts guys. They have guns. Right. And they have to use their wits and stuff. And you're dealing, and it, and it has more of a heightened reality, obviously. Both of them reminded me a lot of uh, video games. Even though they neither one were based on video games, that whole level up kind of thing, yeah. going up to the big boss, so. you know, but... 
I, I think that they were Stonk both Kong. very well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As we see Carl Urban is. jumping over barrels. Yeah. yeah. What What else did you did you see this year that you really liked that that you? Um, well, I have to go to my maybe list. off of everyone else's radar. I saw Cabin in the Woods. I really didn't see what all the hype was about. I it was insulting to me, but more on that later. Afterwards, I was so not. I wanted to see another movie. I went and I saw Lockout. With Guy Pierce, which Eric is already looking down at me. I don't give a shit. I enjoyed it. He was, it was insulted fun. by Cabin in the Woods, but he liked yeah. Lockout. I give me credit, people. I have balls of steel to admit it. Have you seen Lockout? I unfortunately saw Lockout. Oh great. I have seen pretty much everything that Guy Pierce has been in. Mm-hmm. I and funny. yeah, I just I couldn't I couldn't do it. I mean, even that one that he did with did you Nick see Cabin Cage. In the Woods? Yeah. So what did you think of in Cabin the in the Woods? Really enjoyed Cabin in the Woods. Luckily, I stayed away from the hype. It's like you're Com- from an alternate reality. Completely yeah, stayed away from the hype. I had no idea what the movie was going in. So when it became what it was, I just went along for the ride and enjoyed it. And I had also unknowingly prepared myself by seeing the night before I saw okay. um, All the Boys Love Mandy Lane. I right. saw Jennifer's Body. Oh my God, I hated Jennifer's body. Terrible movie. Uh, and yeah. and then I saw. Love Mandy Lane's okay. It's okay. And then I saw Evil Dead, the original Evil Dead. So the next day I go see Cabin in the Woods, and it was just that combination of bad horror with classic horror with what the inspiration for Cabin in the Woods was. Just beautiful. I, I really enjoyed I that. I really did not like the film at all. Well, you see, you said I, something interesting about the film. We just should clarify that okay, that I thought was interesting, and I didn't agree with where you said that it's it insults horror fans. Yes. Or like and I'm a horror fan. I guess Mike's a horror fan. All of our horror fan friends weren't insulted by it. I thought it was a fuck you to horror fans because uh, if, if if people are familiar, Josh Whedon, the writer creator of the movie basically said he was sick of the torture porn genre, and he said, I think it's garbage, those are not films, I'm gonna make something that's gonna really be great. And I just thought it was, it, it was trying to be too hip in on, the, you know, in on the joke, and one thing that I, I did not like is that you have two stories. You have the people, there's spoilers if you want it, so tone away now. You have the people downstairs in the control room, then you have the people in the cabin. That I was more interested in the people in the, ca- in the, sorry, in the control room than I was in the cabin. And the problem is that they're just, they're just, But how they're is not it an insult to horror? It's, it's because what you're basically saying is, those of us who really like the film, we don't recognize that we're being insulted. I That's just what you're basically saying. I thought it was saying. a put down. It's like, this is what, they're trying to tell me what's good about horror and, 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 and trying to force it down my throat. That's so we I don't think. recognize we're being put down? I can kind of see your point that he's putting a fine point on the whole idea of these are so, so formulaic that every single one follows the yeah. same thing where you've got the guy who's going to warn you away. I mean, I had just seen Without Warning recently, so that guy totally reminded me of the Jack Palance character inside of and that. And those are legitimate criticisms. Yeah, but and I but I like that. I thought that yeah. he took took that form, took that formula that you've seen so many times that really hasn't been that perfected. I mean, you know, I'm a huge Evil Dead fan, so to me that's the perfect you thing. Better be from Michigan. Yeah. To me that's the perfect one. And then you get all of the kind of retreads and everything. So I was glad to see him kind of say, like, this is the same story every time, but then kind of put that larger story on top of it, that these are these sacrificial lambs and all this, so that there is a point to the formula that you've seen every time. So I I see your point as far as, like, he's making fun of these for being by-the-numbers horror films, but I like that he kind of went that extra push. I just... It left me with a very bad taste in my mouth. I didn't like any of the characters at all. I mean, I thought they were all completely unlikable. But I think that's kind of the yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the point. But the problem is that, you know, they're, they're also the, the ending where, you know, you see this whole thing. There's just, they, I had plot holes. Eric, you didn't think it was a plot hole. It would be too long. I don't want to get into a whole Cabin in the Woods show. Another film that I really liked, and it was a it was very, very big surprise. I was not expecting much. I mean, I just put on, but it was, it, it had me laugh because it reminded me of a film we were talking about earlier, Where's Papa, where... It was very dark, and you're not supposed to be laughing at this, but you laugh. Clown, the Danish film. I heard that's very good. It is great. Highly recommend you guys check that out. It is on Netflix streaming. It's brilliantly, oh my God, it's funny. Very dark, very sick. You'll love it. Uh, another film I liked last year was Looper. I thought Looper was very good. A nice Looper surprise. was fun. Fantastic. 
Looper was fun. Uh, and in fact, I thought that uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was a better Bruce Willis than Bruce Willis. Great screenplay. Uh, <laughs> great screenplay. Very clever. And I liked it. was a, rare, a very rare time travel film that it didn't so much focus on the technology of going back in time, but the actual, the, you know, the whole idea of just being back in time. I thought it was very clever. And the consequences. And the consequences. Nice. So yeah, it kind of reminded me a little of like 12 Monkeys, where we're not dealing with the yes. tech, right. just more the interactions yeah, being and the, in the past. implications. Like, exactly. Yeah. Um, that was nice. Yeah, and right after I watched that, I went back and rewatched Brick by Ryan Johnson, which was which is just, a very good film. Oh my god! And yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt just oh, he's gosh. becoming a very good actor. Yeah. yeah, man, a kid from Third Rock from the Suns yeah. really coming into his own. Another film that I really liked, uh, and in fact, I saw it with Eric last year. It was a, it was it was it was we expected to be good, and it was very good. And that mm -hmm. was Skyfall. Okay. Yeah, Skyfall was very good. Uh, Skyfall, I've seen it a couple of times since. Um, you know, because I'm about create. You know me. I'm the Bond guy of the cinephiles. <laughs> uh, he's and just double O zero. I th Triple O zero. I, I still maintain. I don't think it's the best Bond film. Like a lot of people have been saying. I do think it's one of the better Bond films. I don't think it's as good as Casino, Casino Royale. Royale. No, no. I no. Um, and <laughs> I, I have problems with the film. I, yeah. I think what's really good in it is incredibly good. When we come to yeah. Skyfall, it, they start going back, and it's like, oh, here's the Aston Martin. Oh, here's the here's Money Penny, and it's just like, okay, yeah, it's a it's a black agent who's Money Penny now. Okay, that's kind of neat, but it just felt like they were getting back to the you I, know like remember that cool thing. I hey, here you go. That. There are aspects about that that bug me, but then there are things about it where it's like, you know what? They could have done that a lot worse. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, Die Another Day is like the worst example of self-masturbation in, in, in praise of their, their legacy as a film series where, yes, yes, that is the bathing suit. Right. You know, Ursula Andress Warren and Doctor. Uh, you forget one thing. That was the 40th anniversary and this is the 50th anniversary right. this year. I thought what they did was a lot more subtle this time where it wasn't so much in your face but they integrated it into the plot more. Right. I would say where it did bother, bother me a little bit was, okay, Aston Martin ejector seat when he threatens to eject yeah. them. I was like, wait a minute. When did his yes. Aston Martin get tricked out? Right. Because this, if anything, with the Daniel Craig era, they did promise more continuity. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, when in all this, you know, quantum between Quantum Solace and, and Casino Royale, when did, he won this Aston Martin in a poker match, right? Did he have Q Branch trick it out? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't understand. It took me out of the film, but yeah, that did have a decent payoff later on mm -hmm. when he, they actually used the car. Yeah. Like, um, I, I love what I liked about it too is that it went di different from the typical Bond formula, like the Straw Dogs type ending. I really like that where he's really like down and dirty. And what I liked too is I thought it was a it. subversion of the usual Bond. I like that. I thought it was good. And, was good too. and what I liked is I love that you know this was a, a, a damaged Bond. You know, a Bond that's not at the top of his game. I mean, of course mm -hmm. you could probably put that, but this is the first time you've seen it really where he's injured. Where, yeah, I mean, there's that too. whole part like where Bane takes him and breaks his back, and then he has to go away for six months and get those guys to use the rope and re-straighten his spine, then he crawls out of the prison and comes back. I found that to be effective for them. So. Uh, I think the Dark Knight, right? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the crisp, the, the Nolanization <laughs> of James Bond, is that what we're talking about? Yes, there were similar, there were some Nolan-like moments yeah. in, Nolan in Skyfall. Right Although I thought, I, I gotta be close. honest, I thought that the use of the balance of humor and serious tone was a lot more successful in mm -hmm. Skyfall. You know, I, I tend to watch so many films for the podcast that I don't get out to the theater as much as I want. But I'll say the one movie, the only, and this is probably going to drive you crazy, the movie that I saw oh, twice yeah, at the theater last year was The Avengers. That's I didn't the mind one. The Avengers. We were good. Oh, The okay. Avengers we liked. We enjoyed I it. I loved The Avengers. I had such a fun time seeing that movie. It's a perfect popcorn film. Oh, he makes God. us look Cabin in the Woods as far as I'm concerned with that. Let me ask you a flip question. What were some of the worst films you saw this year? Or, or most well, disappointing? I got my list. I'll bring it up. Not, as, not necessarily the worst, but if you can't think of the worst, think of like one that really disappointed that you're looking forward to. Uh, and for me, it was Prometheus. I think I'm one of the few people that actually liked Alien 4. And I liked the I first did. Alien vs. Predator. Mm -hmm. um, I did too. Didn't like the second one at all. But, See, I didn't uh, like either Alien vs. Predator films. I liked the first Alien vs. Predator. The second yeah. one I thought, I liked that it was a little, like there's a couple of disturbing things in it, but it's a really poorly made movie. Yeah, it's very poorly made. Uh, so I had higher hopes for uh, Prometheus, and it just, I don't know, it just, it didn't really move me at all. I just I felt that it was more of an exercise in style than anything else. Was there any new films that came out in the past year that might have been under the radar that you thought was very, very good that deserves more attention? 
Um, well, you know, I, I mentioned compliance a little bit ago, um, you know, and we had talked a little bit earlier about the uh, Eurocrime documentary, which is still making the rounds, which is great. Is it called Eurocrime? Yeah, Eurocrime, that's got a big long title after it, like the action films that ruled the 70s, yada, 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 something like that. So, but yeah, just Eurocrime itself, Mike Malloy's the director, and that's, uh, it's been hitting different festivals, and I think it'll be hopefully hitting DVD relatively soon, uh, or cool. VOD, or however things are going to be distributed in right. 2013 and beyond. I'm looking forward to that very much. That one and the Canon documentary are probably the two of the most anticipated movies I, I want. To, I really, I'm a big Eurocon fan. Of, what do you say? Yeah, I would love to see the Canon documentary. Oh. That sounds Canon great. Is, Canon, if Canon has made me who I am. The Canon movie. documentary. Yeah, I want to see that too. What do we think? What do we think of the Oscars itself? Did we think it was a, the usual mundane kind of? Did McFarlane do a good job? I thought he was all right. You know, the thing that I like the most about the Oscars, and this is going to sound really bad, but so be it. I love a good montage, and it felt like they barely did any montages this year. Like, they did the death montage. How the fuck did you leave it Andy Griffith? And they left out fucking Andy Griffith, which is just absolutely inexcusable And what the hell me. was with that Bond tribute? That was That was the most overhyped terrible. piece of shit I've that ever seen. That was terrible. Life. And then you get freaking Halle Berry out there. Right. The worst Bond girl. Like, they were going to spin off the Jinx character right. into her own series. They brought it out because she was an Oscar. Oh, God. That was terrible. I just don't take the Oscar serious anymore. Yeah. You know? Think about the choices. Some of the best picture choices. I thought, like, The King's Speech, Gladiator, Best Special Effects for Gladiator, and Best Film. Greatest Show on Earth. It's just, it was a difficult thing to watch this year for me. I don't know. It just I took so long. I had a DVR so, so I could fast forward yeah, through everything. Yeah. It took so long to get, you know, it, it, it like all the banter that they do before they give out the right. awards. Just like cut all that shit. All the Chicago stuff. What was this? The Chicago show that just made because no sense Because the guys who produced me. this year's Oscars produced Chicago. Yeah, which was just like, So oh, it's like, oh, let's just pay tribute to all the films we produced. You know? yeah. It's like, oh, come on. It was just weird. And they spent man. all that time on that when they could have given people more time to live Exactly. Their speeches. That was the same. And the thing that really drives me crazy is that whole hot chick award thing where they take the hot chick mm -hmm. and they send her off to be with the geeks. And then they have like a little five minute thing where they go, here are all the guys that are actually doing stuff stuff that makes it possible that we can make movies these days these guys come up with the Correct. lenses come up with the software come up with the hardware everything we're going to give them you know five minutes maybe right and then we're going to spend you know uh you know 25 minutes masturbating ourselves about like best song and that kind of stuff right it's just like exactly <laughs> well anyways uh we're wrapping it up we want to really thank mike white for joining us Thanks coming out of his way yeah. appreciate he's it come from michigan just to be with us now <laughs> he's here uh judging the uh, cine kink festival which we discussed in a prior episode and uh really happy took uh some time out of his busy schedule to visit us and have these discussions with us and and brunch yes and brunch thank you for taking the time to be with us thank you guys for having me here that right. fun. wasn't that fun it was fun fucking a <laughs> cut <laughs> all right awesome good job